Hello everyone, this is Keith from the Solo Gamers Club and welcome to the channel. Tonight we're going to continue with our playthrough of A Touch of Evil 10 Year Anniversary Edition Against the Werewolf. At the close of the previous video I alluded that I had some mistakes in at the end of that video so we're going to correct those right now. During the fight that Lucy had against the host at the monastery I failed to use Lucy's lucky ability and that allows her to once per fight round force her opponent to re-roll one of its fight dice. Well we've re-rolled that it ended up coming up as a four and that, therefore on that last hit that she took uh, it was actually a miss so she ended up killing the host she gains the four investigation for that she doesn't lose the investigation that she did for being KO'd because she's not KO'd and um, she closed the fight with two wounds out of her three health boxes so that's what happened with that um, in addition Lucy would have been able to utilize the shopping area at the monastery and we're going to take care of that next Lucy ended up with a total of 15 investigation and she's going to use 11 of them to purchase robes and a crossbow that'll move her down to four investigation remaining and finally to close out Lucy's turn she's going to use her book of medicine it says at the end of each of your turns you may choose one hero in your space including yourself and make a cunning five plus test for each roll of a five or six heal a wound from that hero and that's what she's going to do her cunning is a two so she'll be rolling two dice for the test and we'll see if she can heal some of that wound damage that she's got. Here's the roll. And she failed, so there's no help with the Book of Medicine. So the only option we have left is, I think what she'll do is um, she'll spend three investigation and heal one wound the old-fashioned way. And that'll bring her down to one wound out of her three or now four health boxes our next correction occurs also at the monastery and that involves Heinrich Cartwright Heinrich Cartwright became possessed after his encounter with another one of the hosts and as such he should have recovered at the monastery be, uh, during step three of the mystery phase so he would have recovered and then the card says that he gains the keyword demon and at the end of the mystery phase he would move to a random location and if there's a hero there he would have to engage in a single round of combat so we're going to draw a layer card and move Heinrich Cartwright to that location and he is going to move to Smuggler's Cove so Heinrich will move to Smuggler's Cove there's no one there and um, that is going to be all the corrections for the previous turn and we'll continue on with a new round and our lead investigator is Eliza the Witch Hunter. Eliza is currently at the North Dock. She has a total of eight investigation points and we'll have her make a roll for movement. She rolls a three so she has three movement points available to her. And I think she's going to move to the monastery. And we'll have her encounter the space. Now Eliza has a charmed relic and it says once per game round you may draw a card from a corner. When you draw a card from a corner deck you may discard it and draw again. After each use roll a d6 and discard on a roll of one. So in case she draws a nasty card we have some way to work around that. So Eliza is going to draw a monastery card and she draws the card Oath of the Hunter. Oath Hunter gives her an extra wound box. You gain plus one fight dice against any vampire, ghost, or demon. Limit one oath. Do not, does not count against your carrying limit. Well we'll take that and it's even got Eliza's picture on the card. That's fantastic. Now unfortunately she already has a card from the monastery and that is the Light of Truth card. So I think what we'll do is we're going to discard this card and keep the Oath of the Hunter. 
And now Eliza is going to examine the monastery items for purchase. And Eliza is going to purchase a flail. That's plus two to combat. Costs seven investigation, but it counts as two items against her carrying limit. So that combined with the charmed relic, she will be maxed out with her standard uh, equipment that she can carry. She can still carry one card from each corner deck, though. But I think this will be a good addition for her. And that's going to bring Eliza's turn to a close. We'll move on to Liliana. Now, Liliana is currently at the magistrate's office, and there are some feral kin that are uh, nearby her. Now, she gets to use her spirited ability, where she can use spirit in a fight. And when you combine her spirit with the addition of Brother Darius, that will give her four spirit. And these feral kin only have one wound box, so we have a good chance of being able to take them out. And we're going to have Liliana roll for move. She has a horse, so she'll be getting plus one. Her roll is a six, and that's going to be modified to seven. She's got seven movement points. And I think the best thing to do is we're going to have her move to the covered bridge, and she's going to encounter the feral kin in combat. Now the feral kin, as I said earlier, they have one health, and three fight dice and they are deadly so they're going to be hitting on a four five or six we're going to be using our spirited ability which will allow us to roll using spirit she has a current spirit of four and the feral kin will be rolling three dice for its attacks we only need to get one hit on this creature to win so let's make the roll and find out if we can take this thing out All right, there are no hits for Liliana, and the creature did two hits to her, unfortunately. So we're gonna mark her with two hits, two wounds. That's used up uh, two of her four wound boxes, and I think she's gonna continue with the attack. We only need to get one hit to take this creature out. Okay, here is the roll. And she got the hit she needed, but unfortunately the creature did two hits to her, and that is going to KO her. So she has killed the feral kin. She was KO'd in the process. She'll gain three investigation for taking that creature out. And then she's going to have to roll to see how much uh, she'll lose for being KO'd. That's unfortunate. She currently has a total of 14 investigation, so here is the roll. She has to surrender five, so we'll take five away from her. and will leave her with a total of nine. And she, unfortunately, is KO'd, and she'll have to go to the town hall to recover. And unfortunately, there's a feral kin at the town hall, so as soon as she recovers, she's going to have to instantly combat that creature. That's going to end her turn. We'll move on to Lucy Hanbrook at the monastery. And we'll have Lucy roll for move. She rolls a six, so she's got six movement points. And I think what she'll do is we're going to have her move to the inn. She can get a little healing there, which will be great. So we'll have her move one, two, and three to the town, or to the inn, rather. So she's made her way to the inn, and she's going to encounter the space. And it says, before encountering, gain two investigation or heal a wound. Well, we'll have her heal a wound. And that will fully heal her. Which is great. Now she's going to draw an in card. And she draws the card Cutlass. Item, hand weapon, plus one to combat. When making a spirit, cunning, or honor test, you may re-roll one of the dice. If the reroll is a one, you must discard the cutlass. Okay, that's great, and she can keep that. She does not have any in cards at the moment. And incidentally, in this game, you can use all of the weapons that you have available to you. You're not limited to a single weapon. Any weapons that you have in your tableau can be added to the fight dice that uh, bonuses that it allows, so that's great. And I think that's going to bring Lucy's turn to a close, and we'll move on now to Heinrich Cartwright. He is currently at the Smuggler's Cove. Now, Heinrich is currently possessed, and that's considered to be a curse. 
Now we have a chance on being able to heal a curse at the beach. So I think we're going to have him try to make his way to the beach and go to the widow's cottage. And here's his movement roll. Rolls a four. So he's got four movement points. And I think we have to try to do that. But he's going to be moving though. Every That's the problem with the possessed condition. He'll move to a random location at the end of the mystery phase. So unless we can make it there this turn, it won't really help us. And I don't think we can. Nope. We cannot. So I think the next best thing we can do is we'll use his movement points. He'll use these water paths, two points into the shipwreck and two points into the icy waters, and that will allow him to claim the investigation tokens that are there. It moves him up to a total of 10 investigation. And now he's got to encounter the space. So we'll have him make a roll at the dangerous location, the icy waters. He rolls a four, so that's going to entitle him to an event card draw. And with his special ability, he gets to draw two cards and keep one. He draws Tactical Strike and Gossip and Rumors. Tactical Strike is play on any hero, including yourself, to allow them to add their cunning to their combat for one fight round. That's pretty good. And then Gossip and Rumors play at any time except during a fight to peek the secrets of a town elder without revealing them. You may choose one of those secrets to discard and draw a new one without looking at it to replace it. Well, both of those cards are good. My instincts are telling me to take the Gossip and Rumors card as we haven't done any investigating of the Elders yet. But that Tactical Strike is very alluring. I guess we'll, we'll keep the Gossip and Rumors card. And I think he's going to use that Gossip and Rumors card right now. Play at any time to peek at the secrets of a town elder without revealing them. You may choose one of those secrets to discard and draw a new one. And the flavor text reads, My cousin's brother-in-law heard from his friend. All right. I think the best person we can investigate is Magistrate Croft. He gains a plus two fight dice versus, versus any beast. So we will take a look at Magistrate Croft's We'll peek at his secrets and then see if we're going to use the ability to change out one of those secrets. Now his two secrets are inner strength, a fire burns in the heart of this elder with a warrior's spirit and hero's courage. They are a natural leader with a powerful and a powerful ally. Plus two fight dice during a showdown. That's great. We'll keep that. But we're going to change out the shadow's puppet. Uh, that says the elder's mind has been taken by the dark evil of the villain, twisted and controlled to do terrible things. We're going to change that one out. So we're going to get rid, we'll discard the Shadow's Puppet, and we'll give him an unrevealed new secret to replace that. That was a good use of that card. And that's going to bring the player's round to a close. We'll move on to the mystery phase, and that's going to be resolved by Eliza. And the first step we have to take care of are those existing features that are occurring with Mayor Carver and the Widow Jessica. Mayor Carver has a werewolf scratch and he has already been transformed into a werewolf elder. At the start of each mystery phase, the first player must pass a spirit or cunning five plus test or take five fight dice attack. So we'll have to do that first. Eliza currently has a spirit or cunning value of three. So she'll be rolling three dice for the test. We'll use her spirit value. And hopefully she can pass this without having to take five damage. Here's the roll. And she failed. So she's going to take five fight dice damage from the werewolf elder. So we'll be rolling five dice and we'll see what happens. Oh boy. Here's the roll. He's done one hit to her. So we will mark her accordingly. She has used up two of her total five health boxes. And now the widow Jessica, she has a secret madness and she's going to move to a random location. And depending upon if there's an elder or a minion there, that will decide the action. So she's going to move to 
the church. There's no one there, so we'll be placing two investigation at the church. So we've placed the widow Jessica at the church with two investigation and we'll continue on with our mystery phase. The next step is KO'd Heroes will revive and that means that Liliana is going to revive at the town hall. She'll be fully healed and she has to immediately battle the feral kin. Once again, she's going to be using her spirit that will allow her four fight dice. Feral Kin has three, but it's going to hit on a four or greater. Here is the first round. And she did pretty well. She ended up taking the Feral Kin out with one hit. It did one hit to her. So she's going to gain a wound, but the Feral Kin is no more. And that's going to earn her a total of three investigation for taking that creature out, which is great. It'll move her up to nine investigation and one wound. Now we'll move on to the advanced co-op mystery phase chart roll. Eliza is the lead investigator, so she'll be making the roll. Here we go. Roll is a seven and that's Surge of Evil. Roll once on the villain's minion chart and work out the result. If it is a minion or if the villain attacks, draw a random location. All right, here is the roll on the minion chart. Roll is a six and that is a werewolf attack. So we'll draw a layer card and see where that werewolf attack occurs. That's gonna happen at the town square. All right, there's no one at the town square other than a feral kin. So in that case, we are going to place two investigation and the shadow track will move one step towards darkness. That's gonna move the shadow track down to 12. We'll enter a new stage, and unfortunately the werewolf will gain an additional two health boxes. The werewolf now has a total of 24 health boxes, along with an extra health box for each of the two evil elders that he has on his side. So his total health right now is 26. And now Eliza will make the mystery card draw. She draws the card, no one is safe. Mystery death. The villain attacks, killing one of the town elders. Roll a d6. Any town elder with an honor equal to the roll is killed. Each hero gains two investigation. All right, we're gonna have to make the roll and see who that is. And here's the roll. The roll is a five, so we'll check our chart and see which elders have an honor of five. And that would be Sophie the midwife. She has been killed by the werewolf. That is gonna move the shadow track down two. And when an elder is killed, we have to examine their secrets. If there's any evil cards in the secrets deck for that person, he will automatically join the werewolf. And the rules read, when a town elder is killed, move the shadow track as normal and then reveal all of the elder's secrets. Any keyword evil secrets they have immediately take effect, turning them into an evil elder instead. All right. So Sophie's first secret is Shadow's Puppet, Secret Evil. The elder's mind has been taken by the dark evil of the villain, twisted and controlled to do terrible things. If revealed, the town elder immediately flips to become an evil elder, joining the villain. While this evil elder is alive, move the shadow track one step closer to darkness at the start of each showdown fight round. Whoa. All right, and then the next one is a little secret, so that one will be discarded. But Sophie the midwife now becomes Sophie the Vixen. And that was unfortunate. So according to the rules, the shadow track is going to have to move down the two points from 12 down to 10. And Sophie's going to become the evil elder. So all of the investigators received two investigation due to that card. And that's going to bring the mystery phase to a close. And now we have to deal with the possessed Heinrich Cartwright. 
Heinrich is currently at the icy waters and we're going to draw a layer card and see where he moves to and hopefully it won't be in a space with a hero. He's going to move to the bog and there are no heroes at the bog. So Heinrich moves to the bog and that's going to bring the turn to a close. We'll move our first player marker from Eliza to Liliana and we'll begin another turn. So Liliana will be our lead investigator for this round. Now she has a total of 11 investigation and she's got one wound. So technically we have enough points, enough investigation points for her to pick up her uh, upgrade, which would be really good. That plus one spirit combined with her spirited ability would be outstanding. Not to mention she heals a wound at the start of a round. So uh, that would be great. The problem is we don't have an event card to discard, so we need to get one of those. So we'll have her roll for move, and she has a horse that's plus one to move. She rolls a two, and that'll be modified to a three. So she'll have three movement points for this turn. And I think the best thing we can do is probably send her to the doctor's office. She can heal the wound that she's got and draw an event card as well. So we'll have her move one movement point to the doctor's office and she's going to encounter the space. And she draws the event, Search for the Truth. Play to look at a town elder's secrets without revealing them. You may discard any number of those secrets by paying one investigation each. Afterward, if the town elder has no secrets remaining, draw one new secret for them without looking. And the flavor text is, I will find what I'm looking for. Okay, that's a good card. Next up, she's going to take advantage of the heal ability at the doctor's office and she'll heal a wound for one investigation. So that's what we'll do. That will get her back to full capacity. And that's great. And I think what we're going to do is I'm going to pull the trigger and we're going to pay the 10 investigation to get Liliana her upgrade. And we're going to have to discard that event card that we just drew, unfortunately, to do it. But this will get her that very important upgrade. And that's going to bring her turn to a close. She has no investigation, though, unfortunately. Next up is going to be Lucy Hanbrook, and she's currently at the inn. And we'll have Lucy make a roll for move. She rolls a four, so she's got four movement points. All right. Lucy has yet to pick up a card from the monastery, so I think I'll have her move there. She'll move one, two, and three into the monastery. And she draws the monastery card, Library of Latador, Investigation. Searching from shelf to dusty shelf, you come across a book of rituals and madness. As you read, the pages begin to disintegrate in your hands. Make a cunning 5 plus test. If successful, gain plus 1 spirit marker and a resolve token to any town elder. That is awesome. I hope we can pass this test. Those resolve tokens are extremely valuable to us. So uh, Lucy has a cunning value of only 2, unfortunately, so she'll be rolling 2 dice for the test, and we need a 5 or greater on 1. And she's failed, unfortunately. That's too bad. I have no rerolls for her. So uh, that is going to bring her turn to a close. Next up is Heinrich Cartwright. He's currently at the bog. Heinrich has a total of 12 investigation, and unfortunately he's possessed. We have to try to get him cured of that, so we're going to have him try to make his way, I think, to the doctor's office. And here's his movement roll. And he rolled only a 2, unfortunately. This is going to be hard for him to... Uh, to cure this because he's constantly moving around at the end of the mystery phase and we can't control where he's going. There are event cards that can cure uh, curses, so I guess that probably be our best chance. I'll have him move two movement points into the crossroads and he'll encounter the dangerous location at the crossroads. Hopefully he'll roll a three or greater here and he did it. That'll allow him to draw two event cards and keep one with his resourcefulness ability. He draws the events out of nowhere and strength of spirit. 
Out of nowhere, play at any time to search the event discard pile. Take any one play immediately card from there and play it immediately. Or play as an action to immediately move to any other hero's space. Interesting. Next card is Strength of Spirit, and that's a play immediately card, and it would be played on any hero to give them plus one spirit. And I think we are going to keep that card. We'll discard the Out of Nowhere card, and we'll keep the Strength of Spirit. I'm going to give that to Liliana. And with her spirited ability, it's going to move her spirit up to five, and she'll be rolling five for combat. And that's going to bring Heinrich Cartwright's turn to a close. We'll move on to Eliza, and she's currently at the Monastery. Liza has two of her total of five wound boxes right now are filled, so we need to get her some healing. And um, she already has, she does not have an inn card yet, so we could move her to the inn. I think that's what we'll do. So we'll have her roll for move. She rolls a four, so she's got four movement points, and that's enough to reach the inn, and I think that's what she'll do. One, two, and three to the inn. She's at the inn, and she'll take advantage of that heal one wound before encountering the space. So that'll move her down to one wound out of five boxes. And now she's going to draw an inn card. And she draws the card, the Room of Revelation, Investigation Room. Confronted by a shimmering light and a familiar stranger, you now know what you must do. Gain D6 investigation and choose an item from any town item stack to gain for free. If a copy of this card is revealed again at the inn, in addition to its normal effect for whatever whoever drew it, you are immediately moved back to the inn space and must discard that item as well as to investigation, handing it to your previous self in their time of need. If you do not have the item or investigation, you are KO'd as the paradox of time ravages your mind. That's an interesting card. So we'll begin by gaining D6 investigation. And she gains two investigation. All right. And I think she's going to select the sacred chalice as her free item and that's going to give her that is from the monastery gives her plus one to spirit and plus one honor and she can cancel any event or mystery card after each use you roll a d6 and then a one or two the sacred chalice is removed from the game but i think that might be pretty good that'll be her third item and that's going to bring eliza's turn to a close and we'll move on now to the mystery phase and we have to begin with our werewolf elder, and that is Mayor Carver. And he's going to move to the space where the first player is, that's Liliana. And she's going to have to pass a Spirit or Cunning 5 plus test or take 5 fight dice attack from him. Liliana has a Spirit currently of 6, so she'll be rolling 6 dice and she needs to get a 5 or greater to stop this attack. And she's done it, so no problems with that. We'll move on now to the secret madness of the Widow Jessica. We'll draw a layer card for the Widow Jessica, and we'll see what happens. She's going to be moving to the fields, and there is a minion at the fields. And her secret madness card says that if there is a minion there, the elder is killed. Otherwise, place two investigation in the space. So she's going to be killed. That is unfortunate. It's going to move the shadow track two steps closer to darkness. And we're going to enter into the fourth stage. And that's going to earn the werewolf a plus one combat modifier token. All right. And so the Widow Jessica is killed. We've tilted her card. Her e secrets have already been revealed. And uh, unless something happens, she is considered to be dead. All right, now we're going to move on to our cooperative mystery phase roll, which will be handled by Liliana. She'll roll 2d6 and see what happens. The result is a 6, and that's March of Darkness. Every minion on the board immediately moves two spaces 
along the shortest path to the town hall or town square. If there are no minions on the board, instead roll on the villain's minion chart, rerolling events, and place that minion in two locations. Well, we do have minions on the board. There's a minion in the fields, and that's one of those special spaces where we're gonna to have to roll to determine which direction it's going to move. So here is the roll for movement. Roll is a three, so it's gonna to move towards the manor. So it'll move two spaces and into the manor. All right. The other minion is already at the town square on the coast board, so it will not be moving. And now our first player, Liliana, will resolve a mystery card. She draws the card, Choices to be Made, Mystery Death. The player that drew this card must immediately choose one of the following. Sacrifice, discard, one ally, choose a town elder for the villain to kill, or take D3 wounds. Oh my goodness. Well, Liliana does have an ally, and that's Brother Darius. He's already providing her with one wound box and plus one to spirit. That would be really tough to give up. I think she's going to go with the D3 wounds. We'll do that. So we'll have her roll a D3 and see what happens. Okay, here is her D3 roll for wounds. She rolled a one, which is great. Normally, I would probably roll a three <laughs> for most times, but in this case, it's one. So she'll take one wound, and that was about the best we could do. And that's going to bring the mystery phase to a close, and all we have left now to deal with is the possessed Heinrich Cartwright. Heinrich is currently at the crossroads. He's going to move to a random location, and if there is a hero there, he's going to have one fight round of combat against him. He's going to be moving to the docks, and there is no hero there. That is great. So Heinrich moves to the docks, and that is going to complete the turn. We'll move our first player token to Lucy Hanbrook, and we'll begin a new round. Lucy's going to be our lead investigator, and she's currently at the monastery, and I think it's probably time for her to go back to the manor. She does have two manor cards because of that party invitation. She's able to keep two of those, but um, there is a feral kin there she can attack, and I think we have to start preparing for the showdown. Lucy will make her roll for move. She rolls a one that'll entitle her to a event card draw, which is good. She draws the event autopsy, play as an action while at the doctor's office and only if there is at least one town elder dead. Gain D6, investigation. Okay, that's a pretty good card. Lucy is going to spend one investigation and use the secret passage back to the manor. Before we do that, I did discover one item that I had an oversight on. That's this Debt of Honor card that she acquired at the manor earlier. This card would have been, should have been discarded as soon as the Shadow Track crossed into another stage, but this could have been used or would have been used to prevent the death of a town elder. But the card should have been discarded several turns earlier when we crossed into another stage, so that one will not apply anymore. So Lucy arrives at the manor, and she's going to have to combat that feral kin that's there. Lucy's combat rating right now is 2, 3, 4, 5. She has a combat rating of 5. The feral kin has 3, and it has only one health box. So we'll make the rolls. Lucy's also going to gain an extra die for the militia that's there, and it gives her an additional wound box, which is great. So here is the first fight round. Now the Feral Kin will be hitting on a 4, 5, or 6. All right, Lucy has definitely got the hits she needs. She's got three hits. That'll be enough to kill the Feral Kin. Feral Kin will do one wound to her, and we'll mark her accordingly. So well, that will kill the Feral Kin. We'll get rid of that. And that's going to earn her three investigation. And now she's going to encounter the space. 
And now that that debt of honor card has expired, she has an open slot now for a manor card, which is great. She draws the card, dragging chains, investigation. Shh, clank, shh, clank, shh, clank. You freeze in horror as the haunting sound of dragging chains and shuffling feet echo through the halls of the manor as the ticking grandfather clock strikes midnight. Make a cunning four plus test and gain one investigation for every four plus rolled. If at least one six was rolled, also add a resolve token to an elder. That is great. And unfortunately, Lucy only has a cunning of two, so here is the roll for her. She does roll a six. How about that? She's got two successes. So she's going to earn two investigation and a resolve token for an elder, which is outstanding. That'll move Lucy up to a total of seven investigation and we can place that resolve token. And I think we're going to put that on Magistrate Croft. So we'll place that resolve token on Magistrate Croft and that will protect him from being killed. And I think the last thing that Lucy's going to do is she's going to spend three investigation to heal that wound she just took. We need to make sure that we're at top condition if possible. That moves her down to four investigation and we'll end her turn. We'll continue on with Heinrich Cartwright. Heinrich is currently at the docks and we need to try to get him to the beach if we can. So we're going to need a roll of five or greater to reach the beach. We can't go through the town square because the feral kin is there. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Here's his roll for move. He rolls a five, so he's got enough to do it. Two movement points into the icy waters and three into the beach. And he's going to begin by encountering the space. And it says here we have to draw a village encounter card first. Whenever you're on a town location in the village, you have to draw a card from that village encounter deck. And he draws the card, Founder's Journal, Village Encounter Item Book. Counts as a coastal town item. Plus one to honor, spirit, and cunning. Discard to cancel and redraw any card just drawn. That is a great card. Now he's going to make his way to the Widow's Cottage. He can either heal one wound or cure a curse on a die roll, d6 roll of five or six. So we'll try the curse. Hopefully we can do this. That would be outstanding if we can. Here's the roll. And unfortunately he rolled a four. And I've got no way to re-roll that, unfortunately. That's too bad. All right, well, we've tried. The next step is he's gonna spend one investigation and he's gonna attempt to research that research token. He can roll, he's got to make a combined cunning and honor test. Right now his cunning is at two, three, and his honor is at four, five. So he'll be rolling a total of eight dice. And we're looking for a result of two sixes or more and we can reveal that research token. Here's the roll. And he's done it. He's got two sixes the research is revealed to be number three. And the research for number three is animal traps. A werewolf is a beast, and as such, it is driven only by instinct and not intelligence. When an investigator with animal traps is in a space with the werewolf, whether it is in combat with the creature or not, the werewolf loses its bestial speed ability during the first round of any combat or showdown fight round. In addition, during the first round, the investigator will resolve their combat before the werewolf gets to attack, as it is snared in the trap. Animal traps may only be used during the first round of a fight or showdown. That is great. So we'll add that token to Heinrich's card, and he's got two of those research tokens. Now, the Pendant of Protection and Animal Traps. I just wish we could get rid of that possess condition for him. And that's going to bring his turn to a close. We'll move on to Eliza. Eliza is currently at the inn, and she has quite a selection of cards to help her out, which is great. I think we're going to have her try to move towards back towards Shadowbrook and collect some of the investigation that's around there. And we'll have her make a roll for movement. 
And she rolls, unfortunately, a one. That's going to give her an event card draw, which is good. And she draws the event card. You've come to save us. Play immediately. Greeted with joy by the locals, you bring hope to this devastated village. Gain investigation equal to your honor. Well, her current honor level is a total of four, so that's going to earn her four investigation. That's outstanding. That moves her up to nine investigation, and she'll take her one movement point and move one space down the road. And that's going to end her turn. We could use some of her investigation to purchase a layer card, and that might be kind of a wise thing to do. We can purchase a layer card at a cost of three, no matter what stage the uh, shadow track is in. The cost is always three, according to the werewolf's card. So I think she'll do it. She'll spend the three, and we'll draw a layer card and see where this is going to happen. It's at the barracks, and that is where the werewolf's lair is. Place a militia marker in this space. It automatically joins you for the showdown. This may be in addition to any militia marker already there, ignoring the normal limit of one per space. That's a good card. It's going to cost everyone two investigation to join in the showdown, but that's a great showdown card for us. Incidentally, when you're playing uh, using the cooperative rules, there's only one layer card active at a time, and you can always purchase additional cards and replace it with a new selection if you choose, but that's a good one. We're going to keep that. That's going to bring Eliza's turn to a close, and we'll move on to Liliana. She's currently at the doctor's office. We'll have Liliana roll for move, and she gets a plus one for her horse. She rolls a two, and that'll be modified to a three. So she's got three movement points, and I think I'll have her head to the... She has no investigation, so I guess we'll send her to the marsh. One, two, and three. And she's going to conduct a collect investigation action there that'll gain her the two investigation. And then she's going to have to make a roll on the dangerous location. And we'll have her make that roll. If she can roll three or higher, she'll gain an event card. She rolled a one. She's going to have to resolve a mystery card, unfortunately. And she draws the mystery card, Lightning. Draw a random location to see where the lightning strikes. Place three investigation there, and any hero in that space takes D6 minus one wounds. Move the shadow track one step closer to darkness. The flavor text reads, the storms have been getting worse. Okay, we're going to have to draw a layer card and find out where the random location is located. Hopefully no one is there. And it's going to be at the inn. All right, so we're going to place... Uh, three investigation there. No one is at the inn, and then the shadow track will move. So three investigation are placed at the inn, and now we have to move the shadow track. And the shadow track now moves down to seven, and we're quickly running out of time. We need to bring this creature to a showdown, I think, soon. And that's going to finish up Liliana's turn, and we're going to move on now to the mystery phase. And we'll begin by resolving Werewolf Elder Mayor Carver's a potential attack on the lead investigator. She's going to have to make a spirit or cunning test. She'll make a spirit test that gives her a total of four dice. So we're looking for a five or greater to prevent this attack. And here's her roll. She's done it. So she's prevented the attack from Mayor Carver. And now that the widow Jessica has been killed, we don't have to worry about her secret madness anymore. So we'll go on to resolving the cooperative mystery phase role. And our lead investigator is Lucy. So she'll be rolling two dice. And here's the roll. Roll is a four. And that is Lies and Deceit. Roll a d6. Any town elder with honor equal to or less than the roll gains one secret. Any elder with three or more unrevealed secrets, they must be revealed. Okay, we'll make the roll. All right, here is the roll. We need a low number. That would be great. And the roll is a six. So that means everyone 
that is left is going to gain an extra secret. Oh boy. I always roll high when that uh, lies in deceit is, comes up and everybody gets secrets cards, it seems. And so after giving the secrets to all of the elders, we have two elders that are now have three unrevealed secrets or more, and that's going to be Reverend Harding and the Harbor Master. So we'll have to take a look at their secrets and reveal them. And we'll take a look at Reverend Harding's secrets first and see what he has. He's got a little secret full of lies. Without shame or remorse, this town elder spins tales of their exploits and sows seeds of deceit amongst their rivals. No deed is too small to steal credit for. No amount of praise is ever enough. This is of no consequence to the investigation, no effect. Okay, so far so good. And unfortunately, there it is, Servant of Darkness. Working in the shadows, the town elder has been seduced by the dark promise of power and riches. They are now an evil shell of their former self, little more than a henchman of darkness. When revealed, the town elder flips to become an evil elder. All right. And this means that Reverend Harding now becomes the Grand Inquisitor. All right, he's got one more secret to reveal, and it is Hero of the People. That's going to be discarded. So he will keep the Servant of Darkness card, and he'll be moved to the Werewolf's Display. That's his fourth evil elder now. And now we'll examine the secrets of the Harbor Master. First one is a little secret deserter. Once part of a ship's crew in the Continental Navy, the Elder abandoned their post, slipping away into the night to escape their dreaded fate at sea on the eve of a fierce maritime skirmish. This is of no consequence to the investigation and no effect. What a great thematic combination for the Harbor Master. All right, here's the next card. That's a little secret, drunkard. Locked behind closed doors, this town elder drinks into a stupor on a nightly basis, often emerging just in time to soil the front stoop. This is of no consequence to the investigation, no effect. And the last card is on the hunt. Reveal immediately. Place the marker for this town elder on the board in any name space of your choice. While in the same space as this elder, a hero may add the elder's spirit, cunning, and or honor to his own for any card effect or test. Anytime the track, shadow track crosses into a new stage, move the elder to a new random location. Well, that's great. That's a good one. And so we can move the harbor master onto the board in any name space. All right. And I think we're going to place the harbor master at the barracks, and that's where our layer card is. So if we bring this creature to a showdown, we'll be able to gain that benefit with the harbor master, and he won't be considered to be part of the hunting party. It'll be separate. So that's good. And now our lead investigator will have to draw and resolve a mystery card. She draws the card Watery Graves. Roll a d6 for each space on the board that is a marsh, bog, or swamp, or that is connected to a water path. On a roll of five plus, place a drowned dead minion there. And the flavor text reads, they're returning from the sea to take their revenge upon the living. Okay, I'll make those rolls off camera and I'll let you know what the results are. And after making the rolls, we've determined that there will be drowned dead at the lighthouse and up at the shipwreck. And that will bring the mystery phase to a close. And now we have to determine where the possessed Heinrich Cartwright will move. And we'll draw a layer card and see where he's going. He's going to the crossroads. There's no one at the crossroads, which is great. So Heinrich appears at the crossroads, and that is going to bring this turn to a close. And I think we're going to end the video here. We'll regroup for episode four, which is likely going to contain our showdown against the werewolf. Well, that's going to just about wrap this video up. Thank you so much for joining me at the Solo Gamers Club, and I hope that you're enjoying this series of A Touch of Evil 10-Year Anniversary Edition Against the Werewolf. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again on the next video. 
In the meantime, everyone have a nice evening.